Somehow in my coverage of Missile Cavalry, what was it, last summer, and my two videos about the other Centigore variants, I haven't done a video about Centigores with throwing axes, which is a real shame, because for Beastmen, these guys reflect an awesome tool, and at the same time, they're probably one of the top five Missile Cav in the game overall. We'll get to that in just a minute here, but let's take a look. We've got Butcher Bird versus uh, Unreal Expectations from the Warhammer World Championship, and... Beastman versus Bretonia. So, a Butcher Bird coming in here, a brave soul bringing Malagor the Dark Omen, which you love to see that. Gorbel supporting him. We've got the Throwing Axes, of course. Sons of Goros in the back. A couple of regular Centigors out on the flanks as well. Two there, and probably, yeah, two here. Uh, just a staunch line of Ungor Spears and a couple of regular Ungors mixed in just for numbers. On Bretonia's side, Fan Chantress, Double Paladin, all on horses, or Unicorn's case. <laughs> Uh, for the fan chantress, in her case, rather. Uh, yeah, questing knights. Got three questing knights here. Men at arms with pole arms and peasant mobs. A couple of archers, doggos in the back as well. But uh, yeah. So the centigors with throwing axes. One of the reasons, a few reasons, why they're so good as the melee engagement kind of gets underway for the ungors here. Obviously, armor piercing missiles are great, and they do have. Nice armor piercing damage. 22 AP per shot, 6 base, 9 second reload time. Only 70 range is pretty short, but at the same time, it's kind of what you would expect for the throwing axe cavalry. Uh, they are centigors, though, and as you should know from my other videos about centigors, this rowdy here, perfect vigor, and for them in particular, is really, really nice because they will tire themselves out shooting over the course of the game and kind of kiting. They, probably more than the other two variants of Centigors, will take advantage of this because of their kind of nature, their kiting and shooting, uh, you know, throwing their axes, and then, and then in the late game, charging in for cleanup duty, and at that, they're very solid. 38 charge bonus might be the highest of any missile cavalry in the game. I need to double check that. But uh, 32 weapon strength, 27 attack, 20 defense, not amazing. 27 attack, though, pretty decent, again, for missile cavalry. That charge bonus, too, just very, very excellent. I guess down to 32 now, but still, um, yeah. Or a missile cavalry, that is. That's char that charge bonus is really nice. So, let's see if they can take advantage of that. Right now, the Bretonian archers definitely uh, lighting up the beastmen, but the Ungor spearmen herds will largely do pretty cost-effectively against the Bretonian infantry. Ungor spearmen herds I do need to cover. Ungors in general I need to cover, but uh, the regular Ungors, they actually come in here and trade pretty cost-effectively. This is one matchup where you can potentially use Ungors. Not the biggest fan of them, the sword and shield, or axe and shield, but rather a variant. The spears I'm a huge fan of. I think they're amazing, but anyway. Swing and a miss on that comment there. Maybe got some of those uh, men at arms with pole arms, but Gorbel doing a great job here in the center. A lot of this is going to come down to the single entities, though, right? As we know from previous matches with Bretonia, Fan Chantress Drain is very, very strong. Um, the Paladins are also great heroes, and they've been cleaning up some stuff in the back line here. You can see the uh, these Centigors getting routed off. So right now, Butcher Bird's doing a great job of just conserving his Centigors of throwing axes. This unit right here going to get caught and destroyed. Um, but at the same time, like, you see how he's conserving his ammo here and kind of saving it until the late game? Uh, only using it on appropriate targets and not just leaving them on fire at will to, you know, throw their axes at peasant mobs. Because they don't have a whole lot of ammo. That's one of their biggest downsides as missile cavalry is, uh, you know, if you're expecting them to kill, say, like, a lizardman monster or, you know, something with a lot of HP and or healing... Uh, they might not have enough damage output, especially if they lose models out over the course of a fight, just because of their relatively low ammo. But uh, yeah, Gorbel duking it out with a Fae Enchantress here. Paladins are going to come in and kind of swing that, and he's going to want to run away. Thankfully, though, we've still got this giant tactical reserve of Centigors. I mean, I say giant, there's two of them. But uh, still with quite a bit of ammunition left and plenty of support units to come back and try and clean up. And now they're going to start to throw at some of these characters. And, uh, I mean, not super accurate, but they're definitely accurate enough to make some contact. And, like, the Questing Knights especially are kind of ideal targets, right? These ones here, favor of the Fae on them. Very favorably axed in the face. Nice little counter charge from the melee Centigors to kind of screen there. And since the Questing Knights didn't have a charge order on them, they actually take... Pretty solid damage there. Gonna get cleaned up. So again, good protection, conservation of ammo. 
all very important for using the Centigors. And as far as missile cavalry goes, they're probably one of the best in melee, as, as I mentioned, from the charge bonus and from other factors. That perfect vigor, too, means that in the late game, they're still fighting at full potential, whereas these other units that are getting tired, right, uh, they're going to start to get down on speed, especially, which is huge for, you know, chasing missile cavalry. Um, and, yeah, also armor, you know. Uh, other stats as well, so it's just it's really important to have that perfect vigor. The Enchantress maybe getting caught out in the open. Yeah, just oh, all the axed questions. Man, wow, great shot! Whoever got that like right in the back of Silveron's neck. That is a beautiful shot. That Centigore deserves extra peasant burgers tonight. Potentially, that is if the Beastmen win, and that is a big if. Malagor right now just grinding down some men-at-arms with pole arms. He does have decent enough melee stats. Probably should do a video about Malagor soon. 400 weapon strength. Not too bad for a Caster Lord. Uh, he's pretty flimsy, though, obviously. And right now, the Paladins aren't really targeting him too much. They're prioritizing going after the Gorble, which I definitely understand. But they could potentially just snipe Gor uh, Malagor straight up if they went directly after him. A little bit of an awakening of the wood. Centigors are able to dodge that. Pull away there. And still a decent amount of ammunition left. They've used quite a bit. But uh, let's take a look at the value here. Yeah, not quite paid for themselves yet. This one has... Uh, no, that's Malagor. Whoops. Haha. <laughs> This one has not quite, but they can potentially do well against the Fae Enchantress in the late game in melee because, again, that difference in vigor is just so, so important. And now the Rowdy trait is leadership conditional, right? It's disabled if their leadership is wavering, um, but it also gives four leadership while it's active, right? And, I mean, because of their squishy nature, the Centaurs, if they take a lot of shock damage, can get routed relatively easily. They do have immune psychology while this, while this Primal Fury is active, but again, that goes away if leadership is lower than 50%. So you really want to keep them safe and sound as much as possible. They are sensitive Centigors, after all. They have feelings, and, uh, you know, they don't like being bullied. So, <laughs> if you keep them, you know, cocooned in a nice warm hug... I don't even know where I'm going with this. You know what I mean. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hug a Centigore. I don't know about you, but... Uh, yeah, just, just, you know, give them some, some nice, again, peasant burgers, uh, you know, whatever they, whatever they need to have a good time. As long as they are safe, they can perform absolute work, and in a situation like this, where a little bit behind on the balance of power, potentially risky situation, Malagor is going to bravely come in here and rear charge this paladin, and they're just straight up blocking his movement right now. One of them gives, gives him a little shank there. <laughs> Get away, yes, yes. Uh, the Centigors will get away. I don't want to fight those Halberds, but a few Ungor Herds come in. They kind of distract the Halberds momentar momentarily. If we take a look at the rest of the battle here, this other unit of Centigors kind of kiting this Paladin now. This is a, a very ideal situation for them in terms of the battle, uh, like how, how things have played out. I mean, granted, getting caught by him is not ideal, but you see, like, the 19 axes sticking out of his shield that are now disappearing, and there's another one right in the neck. I mean, some of them will hit the shield, and th that represents, you know, missiles blocked, but again, some of them also headshotting the horse. Man, that he horse just took, like, nine headshots right there. So, Paladin potentially taking some decisive damage here. Centigors are just about out of ammunition, but again, that's they're still fresh, and that's so huge here. So, so huge here. Malagor's still fighting. Surprisingly still alive. He's managed to hold himself up quite well here. Probably generated really nice value with those Vile Tides. Centigors now come in to throw their axes at that Paladin. This other Paladin still around. Going to get screened out by some spears. Momentarily, at least. Until they rout. But uh, now the Centigors come in for a rear charge. Try and break some of these units. Those Halberds. Now they're going to pull away and charge back over to the Paladin. And so now... Butcherbird realizing he needs to start using these guys in melee. They're just about out of ammunition anyway. So now it's time to kind of charge them back and forth. Ping pong between these two hero squads. I guess one of them's a squad, one of them's not. <laughs> just a solo paladin. Ooh, they get a surround. Malagor comes in for a nice rear charge. And this is the ideal Centigore scenario. Use all your throwing axes, throwing it, you know, the most expensive targets you can, basically, or whatever priority targets you need to take out. 
and then in the late game get a nice charge maybe get a surround on a key character and just melt them because they are still feeling fine you know they got their little their little camelbacks their hydro flasks they brought their water bottles they got uh, you know proper hydration and recovery going on i mean look at those gains man i want traps like a centigor look at their shoulders dude Yes, exactly. Whatever they're saying. Whatever they're saying. Malagor gonna come in, <laughs> give a nice little kick to the Fae Enchantress. He says, be gone, wench. These Centigors are probably gonna be gone, but at the same time, they're chasing whatever they can. And nice little turn around and just charge the Fae Enchantress, and let's see. She does still have the Blessing of the Lady, so she's got effective physical resistance. Flesh to stone on herself, too, up to 75 armor, but even still, just taking damage from the Centigors, and that is game. So, a very nice game from Butcherbird. Well played to Unreal as well. Very enjoyable game to watch, and that is classic, classic Centigore right there. Centigores with throwing axes. Really, really ideal. Though one of them kind of got crumped, but the other two, yeah, mad value on them. One of them even doubling their damage value on output. Um, both in terms of, you know, the throwing axes and also the late game charge in while they're still fresh and just wreck house. And we'll compare to some other missile cavalry in just a second here, but regular Centigors also, one of them at least, doing a great, great job. And Centigors, if they can get not crumped, <laughs> you know, if they don't take the charge or get shot too much or anything like that, they can deal significant damage. They're a bit glass cannon, but I could have made this about the Ungor Spearman Herd, and I did consider it. Because, man, they performed like MVPs here. And, I mean, granted, they're just cheap spears. Uh, performing at, for an MVP just as a cheap spear is basically just like paying for yourself, right? But, I mean, they do. They're great support units. Malagor also does a nice job here. Fan Chantress doing her drain thing, of course. Lots of kills there. Uh, Paladin's also netting some nice value. Mobs surprisingly doing okay. Yeah, almost 200 value on a mob there. Not sure what happened. But uh, the pole arms, kind of a mixed bag. I mean, they're reasonably cost-effective, so it's not too bad to go in a direction like this. But I would almost consider uh, Beastmen. I don't think you really need the armor piercing of the pole arms because there's, they don't really have any really any ar large armored stuff. So I would probably, uh, besides the chariots, but even then, I mean, you have resting knights with AP. So just from Unreal here, I'd probably option out these guys for the spearmen. You could even dump some chevrons into them so they're equivalent cost, and then they'll have quite a bit more defense, and leadership can hold up better against the beastmen. Um, and then, yeah, maybe the questing knights, like you maybe take one, maybe option the other ones out for knights of the realm that are quite good in this matchup. I actually really like the pick of the uh, uh, Mount Yeoman archers as well as a potential counter for the centigors of throwing axes, but Butcherbird did a great job of keeping these guys back, keeping them away from the threats, you know, these peasant arrows and everything else, until they were more or less neutralized, and then, yeah, using them at the appropriate time. So, great job there. Uh, in terms of other missile cavalry, you might immediately think to compare the other throwing axes, which we definitely will. Um, so, yeah, the, the Marauder throwing axe cavalry, obviously, base version for the Warriors of Chaos here. 600 points, so 200 point cost difference, and what does that get you? Again, look at that. Six extra charge bonus and eight extra weapon strength. So the damage output potential of the Centigors is much, much higher. Um, they also have slightly higher missile damage overall. Let's check the strength on that. Marauder Horseman, 6 and 21. And here, 6 and 22. So they do have even plus one AP, which, ooh, big deal, you might think. But it is actually pretty significant. Um... Over the course of a long battle, especially the Marauder Horsemen with throwing axes uh, do have shields, which is a nice kind of point in their favor, but Centigors have slightly more armor and HP overall, higher leadership, slower speed on paper, but again, because of the kind of uh, faction trait for the Beastmen, this Primal Fury, they are in fact a little bit faster. Uh, the rest here, yeah, I mean, the Perfect Vigor and the Woodsmen kind of speak for themselves. And the biggest thing is those two things, and especially the extra charge and weapon strength also getting modified, well, I guess just the charge getting modified by the Primal Fury. That's where we saw that little bit of extra coming from. In terms of missile cavalry melee stats, I mean, Marauder Horsemen are already pretty good, but Centigors are just that much better, and especially when their opponents are weakened due to vigor loss, uh, they'll just they'll clean house, as you saw there. <laughs> um, 
yeah, uh, other missile cavalry that have good melee stats, probably the one that jumps to mind, and a lot of people will say, oh yeah, Clearing Reavers, I mean, on paper, yeah, with martial prowess, their HP is... Mm, yes, yeah, a little bit lower, but not that much lower, actually, if we compare. They're actually higher than the Marauder Horsemen with throwing axes, which does surprise me a bit, but... 40 armor here, uh, only 24 charge and 27 weapon strength, though, so again, just significantly less damage output potential. Higher attack and defense, especially with martial prowess, their defense is really nice for a missile cavalry. Um, but, I mean, they are still... Missile Cavalry, 148 range, and their missile damage output is just extremely limp in comparison. I mean, they have 18 shots, uh, 3 armor-piercing bows, 140 range. It's good. It's not even 150 range, though. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, yeah, these guys only have 14 ammunition, right? But they're just... the damage output is so much more on each shot, and they can also dump their ammo in a pretty good time. Let's see, 9 second reload time versus 9.9 .9 second reload time. So, in fact, a faster reload, too, so... Just dump your ammo quick, and then get into combat. I definitely think Santa Corps with Throwing Axes are just a way better unit overall. Um, yeah, so I would say they're probably one of the top five Missile Cavalry. I might even put them number two under my very biased Pistoliers. I know I said the Razor Dawns in the past, but just don't listen to me there. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Centigrades with Throwing Axe is very, very good. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.